Hello everyone, my name is Michael Waltos from orderflows.com and welcome to today's presentation on how to identify market turning points as they happen using order flow. Now what do I mean by market turning points? I mean uh, areas where the market goes from a demand driven market to a supply driven market or vice versa, a supply driven market to a demand driven market. And that's where you're going to get some great profit potentials. So my goal for you today is to explain new developments in order flow analysis to show you what you need to know about using order flow to see market turns. I'm going to teach you to trade what you see happening in the market. And the last thing I'm going to share with you a high percentage order flow trade setup. Now, if this is your first time watching one of my presentations, if you stick around to the end, I have a special gift for you. It's a 150 page book called Trading Order Flow that I wrote. And you're not going to get the actual hardbound copy. What you're going to get is uh, the link to download the PDF version. So you can put it on your phone, put it on your tablet, uh, download it to your computer, print it up, do whatever you want. So, those of you that are first time listening to me, uh, I just want to briefly, briefly explain who I am. And, and the reason I'm doing this is so you understand my background and you can see that, you know, I come from a real trading background, not somebody that's just been uh, trading in sim. I've been trading in, in real life. This is what I did for a living, um, you know, at, at an institutional level. And now, you know, I'm teaching you the same methods that I used in my career. So for the last three years, I've been running orderflows.com. But prior to that, I spent eight years at JP Morgan. Or as vice president of futures trading. And this wasn't like I was sitting in some corner office just looking at uh, risk spreadsheets. No, I sat on the trading desk. I was a trader. And, you know, I'd come in the office at five in the morning, leave at five at night. And pretty much any futures contract that was open, that's, that's what I traded. I spent three years at Commerce Bank as a licensed Eurex trader. And that was in the time when, um, you know, electronic trading was just starting up. And to actually have a Eurex terminal, you had to pass this, uh, very intense, um, exam put out by the exchange to become a licensed Eurex trader. And I traded everything, uh, in Europe, in, oh, sorry, on Eurex, you know, you got Bunds, Bobble Shats, uh, DAX, Eurostocks, and I traded them against, um, the, you know, the U.S. counterparts, um, the E-minis, the uh, Bonds, Tens, Fives, two years. I spent, uh, four years at Cargill on their trading desk, and eventually, uh, they, they, when Symex in Singapore closed down their trading floor, they sent me out to Singapore to, set up their trading desk out there, their futures trading desk. I spent two years with uh, EDF Man, the English trading company, uh, as a global macro trader. And I started on the CME floor with Dean Witter. I started out as a runner. You know, I started out at, at the bottom. And nowadays, you know, there's no more trading floors. So you can't just go down and get a job and get entry into the industry um, the way you used to be able to. Now it's, it's very difficult. You have to have like a certain background, uh, come from a certain university, you know, no computer programming. And... You know, it's, it's a shame because, you know, there's some probably some brilliant traders out there that will never get that opportunity to start trading because the the, the barrier to entry has, has shifted a lot. And I left the floor and I worked uh, on the trading desk at Dean Witter, the off the floor trading desk is what they used to call those desks at those times. As Globex was just starting up, you had Globex from CME, you had Project A from Board of Trade, you had NYMEX Access um, from NYMEX slash COMEX. And that was in the early 90s when, you know, electronic trading was just starting up and, and I really saw the future as, as that's where I want to position myself to be going forward. So, you know, that just gives you a brief background of who I am. You know, it's about 20 years of real life futures trading experience. You know, it's not something where, you know, I just sort of diddle around on the weekends, um, back testing anything. No, you know, this is what I did to um, survive. This is what I did to pay my bills, um, you know, pay for my house, pay for my car, everything, pay, eat, you know. It's not like I had another job, but then I'd go home and, and look at charts. No, this is that was my job, trading. So in 2013, I left JP Morgan to spend more time with my family and trade on my own. You know, that's the beauty of trading is it gives you that freedom to do what you want with your life. And I had gotten to, you know, my early 40s, and I just realized I was spending way too much time in the office. I was spending more time in the office than, you know, with my, my wife and daughter. And I, I just know that you know, that's not what I want to do for the next 20 years. You know, I've had colleagues literally die on the trading desk. You know, one lady had an aneurysm. Um, she's, her desk was 20 feet away from mine. A, another guy in, I was in, also in, in Singapore, a guy had a heart attack on the trading desk. And, you know, even at, at Cargill, our, the guy that ran Cargill Singapore, you know, wasn't feeling good. He went to the hospital. The hospital, fortunately, was like a block away from, from our office and had a heart attack right at, at the front door for the hospital. You know, I didn't want to get into that point where I was so stressed because I was, I was um, killing myself for, for a company. You know, when, when it doesn't have to be that way. You know, if I could 
uh, you know, trade for myself, make enough money to be happy and, you know, cover everything. That's great. That's what I want to do. Then I started writing my book, Trading Order Flow. And I was trading with the volume footprint chart at the time as well. But, you know, the volume footprint chart that was available, just, you know, it was a basic volume footprint chart. That's all it was. Nothing special. And, you know, I, I know that there's certain types of analysis that I do. There's certain things I look for in the order flow. And I wanted to have software that can do that for me. And there, I said, you know, there's nothing like that out there on the market at that time. So I sat down. I found a programmer who was familiar with order flow and, and volume footprint charts. And we sat down and you know, I said, hey, can can we do this? He says, oh, sure you can. You know, it's a computer. You can pretty much have it do whatever you want. So, okay, you know, I gave him my instructions and we went to work on it for a couple months. And he came back with the order flows trader. And that was the first version, which, you know, you can see price rejection, price support, absorption, and other little market nuances. Now, it runs on Ninja Trader. So, you know, Ninja, is Ninja Trader good? Yeah, it's, it's all right. It's not bad. You know, especially if you're a newer trader, you know, you got some order routing going through there. But, um, you know, the, for as far as a programming standpoint, it's, you know, for my programmer, that's, that's what his specialty was. And that's why we ended up on NinjaTrader. If he was on a TradeStation Guru, then it would probably be on TradeStation. But uh, it's on NinjaTrader 8, NinjaTrader 7, the original version. But most people are on NinjaTrader 8 now, which is a new version. And going forward, that's what their NinjaTrader is going to support. So what I'm presenting here is what I've developed for myself and built my trading career on. I hope you can find things that you can use or things you can modify and adapt for your own trading. Again, I'm not trying to turn you into a clone of me. You know, I'm not saying, oh, you have to trade like this. No, you know, if something doesn't resonate with you as a trader, don't use it. You know, every trader's mentality is different, you know, whether it's on risk or, um, you know, when you have a position going against you, you know, person A could probably take a certain amount of heat, person B could take more heat, person C could take even more heat than A and B put together. And you have to find yourself a bit as, as a trader, you know, trading, I hate to say, you know, sound cliche, but trading is a journey and you have to go down different alleys, find what works for you, what you're comfortable with and go from there. You know, it's not like, uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's, think of it like dating, right? There's a lot of pretty women out there. And sometimes you think, well, the woman's so pretty, she must be perfect. Then, you know, you, you go out with her and you find out, oh, gosh, she's got no personality. She's awful, even though she looks good. But, um, you know, and, and trading is the same way. You know, you could find a method that has a high percentage, but if it doesn't suit your personality, you know, it's probably not going to work out, for, work for you. So, you know, I'm not saying you have to follow what I say just because I say it. You know, you, you see this so many times on online and in, in these forums, you know, people say, no, you have to trade this way. Then when you question them, you get shot down and called in all sorts of nasty names and then their buddies come in and pile in on you. And, you know, and really, I mean, who do you want to take advice from? You know, somebody that just posts occasionally on a message board under the name Fat Lips 22 or, you know, someone with a real trading background, you know, online, it's very anonymous. You know, I put myself out there, you know, you, you see who I am, you see my background and, you know, I'm not hiding behind a keyboard in the sense that you don't, you know, an anonymous person, an anonymous source. And, you know, you have to take that in consideration when, when you listen to people as far as trading. Evaluate everything you come across from me or elsewhere and decide if it will help you. You know, if not, you know, just reject it. So, you know, let me be clear. You'll have to make trading decisions. That's what trading is about. It's not necessarily about taking red light, green light. Um, signals. I mean, you can, you know, as long as you understand it, you know, and that's where a lot of people go wrong is they don't understand the method that they're training and, you know, they buy a system, <clears throat> red light, green light system, and it fails, you know, it has a couple of losing trades. Then all of a sudden now they're going to start trading the trading system and looking for trades that they think for whatever reason is going to be successful as opposed to unsuccessful. So, you know, that that's not how to do it. You have to understand what's happening in the market. And once you understand order flow, it's going to allow you to view the market in ways you haven't before. Now, before I jump into the whole presentation, let me let me just say a brief disclaimer because you know I want people to understand there is a risk involved in trading. In this presentation, it's for educational and informational purposes only, and should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision. Futures trading contains substantial risk, and it's not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that could be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading. Only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Now, you know, in the trading software world, you know, there's, there's different types of trading software out there. 
There's some that are made by programmers. Well, they're all programmed by programmers, but you know, th there's some that are, are specifically designed by programmers with very little trading experience, and then there's others that are obviously designed, you know, programmed by a programmer. But the force behind it is a trader, okay? And what the difference is, well, once a programmer, you know, the mentality for programmers are to solve a problem, okay? They say, I want to create a software that uh, will give the trader a volume footprint chart, and then they do that, and then that's it. They say, well, I accomplished that. Whereas you know, a trader who's trading and uses the tools on a daily basis will create the software, you know, work with the programmer. Hey, create this program for me. Create this volume footprint chart for me. Throw in these tools. Okay, that's done. Okay, you sit back. Then you start thinking, how can I improve it? So do you want a software that hasn't been improved in five years or a software that's, you know, being improved every so often. You know, you should want one that's being improved and, you know, adding new features over time as opposed to one that just was created and then that's it. You know, no new advancements. And, you know, like I said, I was using a volume footprint chart in 2013 and when I go look at it now in 2018, it's the exact same thing. There's been no additions to it whatsoever. I mean, the only addition is they went from NT7 to NT8, but that's it. You know, I mean, that, that's not what I would want as, as a trader, you know. It's, it's about innovation and, and taking, you know, new, new discoveries, so to speak, or, or new ways of analyzing the market that's going to give you an edge. You know, if you're using something that has been around for many years and it's just, you know, just the basic thing, you know, it's not going to give you much edge over other traders. And, you know, the order flows trader was designed by a trader for traders. And we keep releasing new tools for traders based on the analysis done by traders. You know, you should want a system that's designed by traders for traders as opposed to the system designed by a program thinking, well, this is what people want. And there's a couple of other versions out there. So I'm going to create the same thing and sell it for a cheaper price or a more expensive price. It's, uh, you know, that, that's not what you want. You want something that's being used by traders uh, for trading. And the tools that I put into Orflow's Trader are tools that I developed and trade from. I mean, these are ideas, concepts, so to speak, forms of analysis, however you want to say it, that you know, I used to do in my head when I was be looking at the volume footprint chart. And you know, that was my goal, was to take what I do, my thought process, and put it into the program so it, it will highlight to me where potential buying and selling opportunities appear. And why is that important? It's because that gives me the opportunity to broaden my horizons, you know, broaden how many markets I'm looking at. If I could have, you know, six charts, you know, six screens, you know, a different chart on each screen. But I can see uh, on one chart, it's giving me a signal, another chart's not. Rather than having to flip through a lot of things and, and keep constantly scanning, you know, my, my resources and my brain are better served that way. So, you know, the first thing I'll talk about is the new developments in order flow analysis. And, you know, like I said, you know, we released the order flows trader 2.0. Uh, about a, you know six weeks ago, more or less, and what we've added into it were prominent point of controls, market sweeps, multiple imbalance, and added enhanced trap traders, which is you know takes what we had in the initial order flows trader, which was the trap trader. So what we did is we we added an extra um, way to view it in there, or extra way that it's going to be highlighted in the software, um, single prints, order flows divergence, and ratios. Now you know. It's funny because, you know, the ratios, you know, that, that, uh, that tool that I have in my software that I added in the initial version was, you know, it, it's, it's a number that appears above or below the bar. And if it's above a certain ratio or below a certain ratio, it's a number that I like in, in the sense that, you know, price rejection or price support. And, you know, so it's been copied by other software out there and, and fine. You know, I do kind of wish they'd just give me credit for it, but still, you know, the, the part that, that chides me is, you know, they call it some fancy name like uh, I've seen uh, order flow algo or something like that. It's just nonsense. And, you know, it just makes me laugh. But, you know, the, the original users of my software, people that have been trading order flow for years and have had my software since it was first released. I mean, there are people that buy literally everything on order flow that comes out. They know, you know, because I get the emails from people saying, hey, you know, this software um, is adding your ratios or this software is adding that. And it's, it's, it's quite funny. But uh, in, in the sense that, you know, they, they try to pass it off as, as some new development that they discovered when, when they haven't. And, you know, the order flows divergence, um, you know, 
basic order flow's divergence is, is simple. It's, it's a new or equal high with a negative delta or a new or equal low with a positive delta. But what makes our order flow's divergence different is that it uh, takes price action into account. And yeah, that's important because if, you, if you're trying to trade a reversal, right, when you have a divergence, you're looking for the market to, if it's a rally, then you got a divergence, you're looking for the market to sell off. If the price action in the bar doesn't confirm it, then it's got a high, high chance of failing. So, you know, that's the difference between our order flows of divergence and which is free in our software, yet there's there's other software companies selling it that would just that one indicator for five hundred dollars, which is just a basic one. And all it is is just when you have a new or equal high with negative delta or a new or equal low with positive delta, there I just saved you five hundred bucks, you know, if you're using a different a different software. So let me explain some of these new um, developments here or tools that we have in the order flows trader. Prominent point of controls. Now every bar has a point of control. And what a point of control is in the bar, it's the area with the most price volume. And volume footprint charts, you know, they'll put a box around it, uh, you know, sort of shaded in a little bit just to highlight it. And what a prominent point of control is, it's the point of controls that, based on my analysis, I have found to be important. And they often act as support and resistance. Now, why is that important? Is because when you know areas of potential support or resistance, you can take advantage of them when the market reaches those prices again. So how does it appear? So again, like I said, every bar has a point of control. The ones that are supportive, you know, I color in with a cyan color, kind of an aqua blue color. The ones that are resistance have a, you know, sort of a magenta pinkish color, okay? And you can see how oftentimes, you know, they act as support or resistance. You know, lots of times I could show you tons of charts where the market just literally reacts right off those levels. It's, it's, it's I don't say scary, but, you know, that's, you know, when you have support and resistance, that's what happens, okay? Now, to sort of allude to the second point that I was talking about, when you know that there's support or resistance, you could also play for pullbacks towards those points. And you can see here, you have a supportive point of control here in this prominent point of control, whereas the market eventually, you know, it sort of goes sideways, trades right back down to that point of control, rallies right up to the sub resistant support of control, comes off, rallies right back up to that point of control and sells off. So, you know, if you're someone, you know, who has a trading plan that, you know, likes to look for you know buying opportunities on on pullbacks to support if you know the first time you hit that level you have support down here you trade there you know you could throw in a bid at that level you know your stop is just two or three ticks away it's not like you're gonna have a 20 tick stop you know you, if, if the support level breaks down you should be out of the trade you know if you're right at this point of control you probably would not have gotten here only three lots traded that the market rallied up here hit this resistance and you know okay you could throw an offer right there you know, if you have to stop two or three ticks away, this one you would have been filled because it went bid over here. So if you got an offer here at uh, nine and a half, you know, it was nine and a half bid. So you, technically it'd be filled and, you know, nine and a half all the way down, to, you know, in this bar down to two. You know, so that's, this is euro currency. So that's, uh, what is that, like 16 and a half ticks right there, you know. Um, so th there's different ways you can play the prominent point of controls. I know there are some traders I know that just, Look for prominent point of controls. That's what their whole trading plan is built around. Now, market sweeps. Market sweeps are areas where big traders sweep the market, you know, buy or sell through several price levels in one trade. And, you know, this happens more than, than people realize. And, you know, it's funny because if, if you ever spend any time on message boards, you know, you'll see people say, well, there's no such thing as sweep. Why would anybody buy through the offer price? Well, they've never traded more than two contracts if they say that. Because, you know, I, I know this for a fact because I, I, I used to trade big size when I was working at these firms. And, you know, if I got 500 lots of crude oil to buy and there's only 10 lots on the offer, 25 on the next offer, 15 on the next offer, 50 at the next offer and so on, I got 500 to buy and I want to get it done. Now, there may be icebergs on some of those offers on the way up. I might buy it five cents through the offer price and turn it bid. That's what's called a market sweep. And... I hate to say it, but you know, I think it occurs a bit more on the new, the New York markets, NYMEX, COMEX, because it sort of goes back to, you know, understanding that, you know, their system, their initial trading system, the NYMEX access system actually had a function on there called the sweep function where you can sweep through the market. So say you had a hundred lots of gold to sell. You could see the depth of the market there and you just sort of toggle down your quantity. You know, you just go, okay, it's, it's whatever, 1262, um, 50 bid. 
and you can see down to 1262 10 bid there's 120 you just enter your quantity and boom it'll sell it down 100 contracts down to 1262 10 for you and it does happen you know and, and sometimes people go, oh no no one's going to buy through it you know they do people do you don't understand how traders work when you know people that say no no one buys through the offer it, it happens a lot it happens a lot and i'll show you you can see it on the order flows trader software you'll know, put an arrow i think i'm going to color these different because i have trap traders and market sweeps kind of the same colors just different tones you see how the market is just sort of going sideways here then a big sweep comes in here someone sweeps the market right before the market sells off and when do sweeps happen is because somebody thinks something's about to happen maybe they got some information that hasn't hit the market yet you know or you know whatever it doesn't matter maybe a big order came through the trading desk and you know they got to get it done quickly that's why people sweep the market here you go market sweeps here you know this is crude oil this time before i showed you nasdaq the previous chart that was nq this is um cl and you can see it's market here we hit the low we got a prominent point of control start rallying up we got a red candle here well is it going down or is it going to go back up well boom i get an indication of a market sweep here and it rallies right back up now you know I'll give you an example of, of why people you know use the sweep why people sweep through the market you know there's there's information like i, I remember back in the 90s i used to um talk to this trader at, at coke industries guy was based in london he was a metals trader on the lme floor and you know he traded copper and nymex actually the nymex comex system access you know had copper on there and i think it was at 645 you get the inventory numbers from the lme coming out and you know we'd be there talking on the phone and we see these numbers coming out on reuters at right at the time and you know we'd be ready with our systems to to sweep the market either up or down you know a whole handle either direction for whatever you know 100 lots and you know at that time 100 lots in in copper was was considered a lot but because we know how the, the number is going to affect the market but we don't know what the number is so we're waiting for the number as soon as it hits that not many people are really paying attention to it because they you know they got to call their brokers you know i was fortunate i had an, an imax access machine right on my desk so i could do it so as soon as the number came out boom i could hit it hit the enter button um so that, that's how you use market sweeps and, and people use it a lot you know people sweep the market but it's only the big traders that sweep the market if you're a small retail trader you're not going to sweep the market because yeah, you know, you're just trading, you know, five lots, maybe 10 lots. But, you know, if you're trading 100 lots, 200 lots, 300 lots, you're going to sweep the market at times just because there's no liquidity there. Now, multiple imbalances. It's three or more imbalances in a bar. Now, if you're not familiar with an imbalances, it occurs when there's an buying, you know, more buyers than sellers, more aggressive buyers than sellers by a ratio of four to one or more aggressive sellers to buyers also by four to one. Four to one seems to be the industry standard. I know some people that use 1,000 as their imbalance and they have the whole trading plan built around that. It really depends on you, but you know, I stick to 400. Now, what a multiple imbalance is, it's similar to a stacked imbalance. Okay, now a stacked imbalance is when you have three or more imbalances stacked one on top of each other. And that's nice, it's a visual thing, I, I get it. But multiple imbalances is when there's three or more imbalances in the bar, they're not necessarily stacked on top of each other. And it's it's very important actually. So i will give you a, a visual visual look at it so what you have here right off this low where the market starts rallying up off this prominent point of control you have a multiple imbalance okay further up here you have a stacked imbalance and the imbalance is neatly stacked up top of each other you have this nice zone drawn out but here you just have one two three four imbalances on a eight range chart which there's five, nine price levels so you know 45 percent of the bar is is aggressive buying buying imbalances 18 against 73 against 20 9 against 131 0 against 31 these are all imbalances now let me ask you where would you rather be getting long down here right off this low where you see the aggressive buyers coming in with the multiple imbalances in the bar or you know that's at 72.55 or you're going to wait until it gets up to 72.75 where you got a stacked imbalance to get long well again would you rather get long at 55 or at 75 that's 20 ticks of extra profit you're giving up by just keying in on stacked imbalances. And, you know, that could make or break your trading day, you know, between, you know, 20 ticks. And, you know, it happens more often than, than not. And, you know, there's another example, crude. This is a one-minute chart this time. You know, we're just sort of come down into this bottom. we got this bottom forming. 
you know, when you come down, it's like a plane landing, you know, it's gradual, gradual coming in. Now it's getting ready for takeoff. What you're going to look for signs is, you know, are we going higher? And you're just hanging around this low, you know, the plane is landing, boom, boom, boom. Okay, now it's getting ready for takeoff again, because what's happening is you're at this low, buyers are being attracted by the low prices, they're coming in. You know, the bigger traders are seeing that, hey, you know, this is a good price here, 64.70, 64.66, I'm going to get in. And they get aggressive, they start buying it, and boom, the market rallies. And if you're looking for a stacked imbalance, you got no stacked imbalance down here. You're going to miss that trade completely. Okay, here's another example, euro currency. Okay, you hit your high, you know, you have a divergence here, this one fails. Uh, it fails in the sense that you made a new high by four ticks. Then you get up here to this new high, you have a prominent point of control, which is also bearish. Then you get here, you got another divergence. But what else do you got? You got a stack, I'm sorry, multiple imbalances, no stacked selling imbalances here. You got one, two, three, three imbalances right off this high. You know aggressive selling is coming in off this high. Earlier, you knew you had um, resistance selling as well. So you're up here at this high and you, you're just all seeing signs of selling coming in. If you look at the delta, it's mostly all negative delta except this one bar with a small positive delta of 15. But overall, it's all negative, you know. What would you rather be doing? Think of them, you're going to think the market's going to get, go higher? Or you think the market's going to sell off? All signs are pointing that this market's getting ready to sell off. All right, so you know that should cover some of the, the, the newer developments that we've made in the order flows trader. And next thing I want to talk about is what you need to know about using order flow now to see the market turns. And you know market turns are areas where the market shifts from a demand-driven market to a supply-driven market and vice versa. And I said, you know, I said earlier, these are areas that offer tremendous profit potential with manageable risk. Now, you know, if, if you think, oh my gosh, you're talking about supply and demand, uh, I need to know economics. No, it's simple. When a market is demand driven, there's, there's, people are interested in buying and the prices go higher. If it's supply driven, there's a lot of supply on the market. There's a lot of inventory and the prices go lower because in order to sell that excess inventory, they got to lower their price. Think of it in regular terms, you know, the used car lot or not the new car lot for that sake um, you know when, when the new Corvette comes out there's a lot of demand for it you know everybody wants it but you know a year later once the demand has been met and you know Chevrolet has been making a lot more Corvettes all of a sudden the, the car dealers got a lot of Corvettes on his lot that he can't get rid of so he's got to start lowering the price it's become a supply driven market because he's got a lot of supply and he's got to lower 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 the price to get rid of the cars Think of these things in everyday terms and, and it becomes a lot easier. So prominent point of controls. Again, you know, how I talked about how you know the markets just react, you know, we sell off from a prominent point of control, then we rally from one, then we sell off from another one. You know, that that's nice, that's beautiful when it happens like that. It doesn't always happen that way. But you know, there are there are it happens more often than um I, I can show you charts, <laughs> you know. But uh, just you know, when it happens, you know, be happy that it happens that way. But it, it's a great tool. It's a great tool. And again, you know, where are you going to be placing your stop on something like this? Is just behind the highs. You know, you don't need a 10 tick stop, a 20 tick stop. You know, your point of control is, you know, say 118.08. You know, your, your stop is up here at 118.10. You know, four ticks, five, you know, I wouldn't do five ticks, but, you know, four ticks I think is plenty. Because if you violate that high, then... Um, you know, the reason for being in the trade is not there. Again, if you like to play pullbacks, you know, you got your prominent point of control. You sell off a little bit, rally right back up to that prominent point of control, and then sell off. You know, so rather, you know, there's two ways to play it. One, you could be aggressive because sometimes it doesn't pull back. But, you know, if you're patient and you want to play a pullback, you know, that's what I talk about. This is what I talk about, the low risk trade. You got an offer sitting right in here. You know, at 47, 24, 647. Yeah, you catch the move down to this other prominent point of control down here at, at uh, 27. You know, and we rally back up to where? That prominent point of control. Sell off to the prominent point of control, rally back up like that. It's almost like a ping ball machine. Ping, uh, ping ball? Ping, uh, pinball. <laughs> term I'm trying to use. You can see again here, you know, okay, you got this little sideways action here. But then you hit this low, rally up. You got this high prominent point of control. Sell off from there. You know, and where do you rally? You rally right back up to that prominent point of control and sell off. Now, multiple imbalances. Now, they can occur anywhere, but when you take them in context of what's happening in the market, it's going to make it more effective. You know, and that's where a lot of traders go wrong is they don't take trades in context. Sometimes they say, well, you know, I got a signal here. I got to take it. 
just because there's a signal there. Well, when you take trades in context of the market, this is why I talk about being a trader. You got to understand what's happening in the market. You know, things will become a lot easier for you. Now, here you have a multiple buying imbalance. Here you have a multiple selling imbalance. Now, the market just rallied. Okay, a multiple buying imbalance. Do you want to buy? Can the market go higher? Yes, of course it can, but your profit potential can be limited. You know, I said if we just had a big rally, and I start seeing signs that the market is turning, and then I see a sign. You know, of aggressive sellers coming in in the form of a multiple selling imbalance, then I want to get short. You know, I'm not going to be looking to be getting long. And I can see it here. The market rallied, prominent point of control, came here, made a new high by a couple of ticks, another prominent point of control. Now I see multiple selling imbalance coming in. You know, it's time for me to get short. You know, I wouldn't be thinking that we're going to rally back up, maybe make a new high. The, the potential for it to go short, uh, potential for profits on, on the short side, I think far outweighed the profits on the upside. Because you can see it's getting heavy up here. There's a lot of supply up in here. There's no reason to, to think that it's it's going to continue this rally higher. Now, multiple imbalance. Again, you know, the reason why I added multiple imbalances is because in order flow, you're taught to look for stacked imbalances. You're taught to look for, you know, the the, the called shade color in area. And if you do that, you're going to miss the multiple imbalances. And again, you know, it's important because you know, if there's a lot of imbalances in a bar, even though they're not stacked, doesn't mean it's not important. It's important information. And it's information that very few people are even using. You know, always, you know, you talk about trading, you know, always always says you have to have an edge, you have to have an edge. And that gives you an edge over traders. I mean, if you have information that's available and you're using it in your trading and nobody else's or very, very, very few other traders are using it that's going to give you an edge over them yeah you know, that's what you have to understand having an edge is in the market is is having something that other people don't have you know and it's not inside information this information is available to anybody that has um, software but you know do you want to use it or, or not you know do you think it's important or not now here's a great example point a point b point c point a multiple imbalances point b also multiple imbalances but it's a stacked imbalance point c multiple imbalances but on the downside so let me ask you point a point b where would you rather be getting along point a of course you know you'd rather be getting long 27.92 then oh my gosh i got a stacked imbalance up here at 27.97 i gotta get long you get long but you're met with you know very bearish bar up here you got a bearish ratio you have um, trap traders you have also um, a divergence you got the new high with negative delta so even if you got long here, you're going to get out. You're going to get stopped out most likely if you don't uh, get out on your own. And then in the next bar, you got multiple imbalances, multiple aggressive sellers coming in, and the market sells off. So again, if you're only looking at stacked imbalances, you only see this. You don't see this great buying opportunity down here. You don't see this great selling opportunity up here. You just take your loss here and say, oh, multiple imbalances don't work. Well, or buying uh, stacked imbalances don't work. Um, yeah. You know, because you're not using all the information that's there for you. And, you know, it just boggles my mind. Sometimes, you know, people aren't interested in, in using that because for whatever reason, they think order flow is, you know, some sham. It's just taking the data that's available to everybody. You know, this is information that order flow has been around for a long time. I don't want to go into the history of it, but if you go back to, you know, the 1920s, you see all these guys standing around with their hats on and they're top coats looking at the vacuum tube with uh, a sheet of paper coming out the ticker tape that was order flow in a sense that was a crude form of order flow now with the advent of computing power it's really gotten more powerful so here you got multi you got a bunch of things going on in here so i talk about how order flow allows you to see things you normally wouldn't see or, or make it more clearer for you when you're trading you come down here to a swing low prominent point of control okay then next bar two stacked imbalances you got multiple imbalances you know and you should be able to notice the stacked imbalances but this is interesting because it's a double stacked imbalance then you've got uh, a market sweep as well so you got three things in the order flow telling you hey get long this low is most likely going to hold because you got you got supportive buying now you got aggressive buying coming in get long you know and you'll be you know, rewarded from it from you know the, the mid 40s all the way up to 80 and multiple imbalances now here you just you have this prominent point of control in this bar great but you also got multiple imbalances you got four imbalances in there okay this one took a, a bit this one sort of went sideways before taking off um, but you know the signs were there you know when you can start adding 
together some of the other pieces of order flow, it just becomes, you know, trading becomes much easier. Now, you know, that, that leads me into the third thing I want to talk about is trade what you see happening in the market. And you don't try to predict the future. You know, that's just trade based on what you're seeing in front of you. You know, don't sit here with all these, you know, Gartley patterns, bat formations or whatever, trying to predict the future. No, you know, if the market is telling you, hey, it's great, you know, aggressive sellers are coming in here, you get short, period. That's all you got to do. You know, or, hey, aggressive buyers are coming in here. Or, hey, you got supportive buying here. Now now there's aggressive buyers coming in. You get long. Um, don't don't try to complicate things. You know, most most times, um, you know, traders spend a lot of time waiting for confirmation, waiting for confirmation instead of actually trading. I mean, what would you rather do? Sit on the bench or would you rather, you know, play on, on the pitch? You know, you, you, you want to be playing, you know, and, and if you're sitting around waiting for confirmation, you're going to miss a lot of trades. And just because you get confirmation doesn't necessarily mean trade is going to work out any better. And, you know, we tend, as people, we tend to overanalyze situations rather than confront them or as in trading, trade them, you know, you got to take the trades when they present themselves. And it, it's, you know, sports and trading have a lot of analogies. And I, I remember as, as a baseball player, you know, the, he got called up for the minor leagues and then started playing uh, major league baseball and he would go up, he's watching the pitches come in, you know, bat on his shoulder and this is coach told him said hey you're going to swing the bat or what you know you're not going to stay in the majors unless you you know swing the bat so and it's like that with trading you know you gotta you gotta have different trading plans to to take trades i mean there's you know people that trade with one trading method one way of analyzing the market i think you know, you, can you do that yeah you can but you, you you leave a lot of opportunities out there you know it's like having a store are you going to sell one product or you're going to sell multiple products. You know, your, your chances for success with that store is going to be higher if you have multiple products to sell as opposed to just selling one product. So supportive buying the first time marches, reaches a swing low. So again, you know, if you knew the first time that you have supportive buying, you have to put a bid in here, okay, for the pullback down in here to get long. And again, you know, your stop is just right below here, right below this low by a tick or two. So imagine, you know, if you're waiting for confirmation for a double bottom, well, I gotta wait for confirmation for this double bottom because that's what all the books say. You gotta wait for confirmation for a double bottom. Well, if you know there's support in the market, that's where you get long. I mean, that's the edge that, you know, big traders have is because big traders are often providing support or resistance in the market. So they know that, okay, they know that they're buying down here at 90. So they could be patient, you know, because the market, they know the market's going to probably bounce up a little bit, come back down, and they can buy more. So if you're waiting for the market to make the double bottom and start rallying, you're going to miss your buying opportunity down here at 90. You can get long at 92 because it's got to move away from the double bottom before you can buy. Because, you know, that, that's, that's what you're taught in, in all the trading books. So, and what's your profit potential from 92? It only goes up to like 93 and a half. So would you rather get long at 90 or 92? That's two full points in the S&Ps. You know, that's, that's, you know, what is that in dollar terms? That's a hundred bucks in dollar terms. You're giving up right there, you know, and, and in this move, it only went from 92 up to 93 and three quarters. So this was the, the, the juicy part of the trade that if you're waiting for confirmation, you're missing that, that stuff. Now again, you know, is, is it always going to come in and retrace there? No, it's not, but you know, it's going to give you a nice low risk trade by getting um, getting in here you know if, if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but then you wait for the next time it happens okay so trap traders again this is another tool here I like again you know when I talk about taking things in context again you know trap traders it reads what's happening in the order flow so even if the market's going sideways if there's trap traders it'll put a signal now where would you rather be getting long from here down here or you actually get long here because you this bar would have to close for you to confirm that there's trap traders there. So you get long at 880, or do you rather get long at you know 895? That's 15 ticks there in the in the Dow. Then you got trap traders up here on the sell side, and then the market starts coming off again. But again, take things in context. So you, this is where you should be keying in on here, um, not so much here. You know, I, I like I like it when you get a sharp move down. You get traders coming in late you know that's what's causing this hap to happen that's what's causing the signal to occur is everyone's coming in late thinking oh my gosh we're selling off we're gonna make new lows make new lows i gotta get short i gotta get short they get short the market stamps back they're trapped and you know <laughs> they got to get out but again you know for them to be trapped down here you're only talking about 100 contracts there's enough volume in here for them to get out but 
is a great short-term uh, trading tool. But again, take it in context of what's happening in the market. Market sweeps. You can see it here. Market is coming down into this low, hits this low. Are we going to rally? Are we going to sell off? Well, we got a sweep to the negative side, to the downside right in here. you got multiple imbalances, one, two. Then you got a nice stacked imbalance in there as well. And the market sells off some more. So, you know, these are the tools that, you know, can help your trading if you're not using them. And it's information that's available if you have the right tools to to take that information and put it in a readable format. So the last thing I'll talk about is high percentage order flow trade setup. Now, we all want high percentage trades because that's how you're going to make your money, right? You can't make money unless you, you got trades that pay off regularly. And to do that, you have to start putting together pieces of order flow analysis so you can take advantage of what's happening right in front of you. And, you know, for those that have been following me for years know that I talk about the order flows, divergence, and ratio setup. It's a very high percentage trade setup, one of my bread and butter setups. And it's great reversals, um, you know, it's at highs or lows of the days. And you can see here, you know, Euro currency um, right at the high, getting short, 118.00, all the way down into the mid-80s. And what I'm about to talk about is involves two tools of the order flows trader. Prominent point of controls, which is I explained earlier, the point of control that's considered support or resistance in the order flow. And a divergence, a new equal high with negative delta or new equal low with positive delta. And confirming price action. Again, you know, a lot of the other order flow tools out there don't have that extra piece of confirming price action. They just look for a new equal high with negative delta or a new equal low with positive delta. And why you put these two together is because you know, you're at your high of the day. Okay, you have a divergence. Now, with the prominent point of control, if you're at your high of the day, you know there's resistance in there if there's a, if there's a resistance prominent point of control. Or if you're at your low, new or equal low, positive delta. Delta is telling you that it's positive, that you have aggressive buyers coming into the market, and you have supportive buying in there, which is also powerful to know. So you got two, two things that when you put them together, are quite powerful together. And you can see here, E-minis. From the high of the day, 27.48, we sell down into the, you know, the low 40s. Here you got prominent point of control and divergence. Now earlier you had a ratio and divergence. You didn't get to sell off immediately. You rallied back up there. Prominent point of control and divergence. And again, the market sells off from the 50 area down into the 40s. Again, prominent point of control, divergence. Actually, you got some trap traders down here as well at this low. And you get the nice move up from you know the 40s back up to the low 40s up to the high 40s. Um, bonds, okay, bonds this time prominent point of control and divergence. You sell off from the 20, you know, the 24, 23, all the way down into you know an area where you have a supportive point of control down here at 13, 14. Um, mini Dow, prominent point of control, divergence, and you know you rally from 25 all the way up to you know. Up here, where you got you know above 50, where you got the prominent point of control right there. Prominent point of control and divergence. This time it's euro currency. I've showed you uh, bonds, bun, uh, sorry, bonds, um, euro, euro currency now, mini Dow, e minis. I think I got a bun chart next, and prominent point of control and divergence. You see how the market rallies up from there, you know, from the 117.98 area all the way up to the 118.10 um, area. Now here's the buns. Prominent point of control, divergent, prominent point of control, divergent. Um, no prominent point of control, but divergence and a ratio. Finally, the market makes a rally. Where's it rally up to? It rallies up to the area where you have the prominent point of control. And where do you place your stop on this? You just place your stop right below those lows of the day. You know, one tick, two ticks below those lows. You don't need it 10 ticks away. It's going to give you a nice, tight stop and, you know, stop price. So hopefully by now, you can see how powerful order flow analysis has become. Again, don't try to overcomplicate trading. Don't try to make judgments without sound analysis. You know, again, it's, it's about taking the information that's available and using it. And if you found this helpful, you really like what I have to offer. It's my order flows trader 2.0 software trading package. Now remember, you know, ma overwhelmingly majority of traders lose their account in the first year. And I, th I think there's an even higher percentage that lose their account or most of their account in the first week by 50% of their account in the first week. Why do you think that is? Is they keep trading the same way that all the losing traders have been trading before them? You know, they're, they're not using the new tools, the new developments in trade analysis that's out there. And you know, I, I, sometimes I really feel like they're flushing their money down the toilet doing that. You know, you don't have to. If you learn how to trade, learn what moves the markets. Not in the sense that you know, you got to learn the the economic data numbers. No, you know, if you learn to read 
the volume that's going through and it's it's not like you know you're trying to learn brain surgery or anything like that it's it's really it's a lot more simpler than that you know it's going to make trading a lot more easier so you know we got the the new order flows trader 2.0 which is for ninja trader 8 it'll run on the free version so again you know if you don't want to use you know one of their brokers to route your orders through then you know you get that you can use the software on the free version if you if you have say trade station or say you have a broker's front end you can use the uh, ninja trader for your charting and it's the volume, what you can get is the volume footprint chart with seven pre-programmed order flow tools that are discussed in this presentation. Now, order flows and Ninja Trader, Ninja Trader has their own volume footprint chart. I think I forgot what they call it, volume metric bars or some name like that. That's different than this. And even to get that, you have to buy the thousand dollar over version of Ninja Trader. And normally, and you get my chart template, right? Which is going to help you get set up on this. Cause you know, that's the problem is a lot of people get a volume footprint chart. They don't know how to set it up you know it's like getting furniture from ikea you know trying to put together you know a, a, a dresser or something it's, it's complicated as heck sometimes for you know people especially if you're not computer literate trying to figure this out and normally i sell this for 8.99 just this overflows trader and again you know if you want to get like the ninja trader volume footprint chart which doesn't have any of these tools in this presentation you got to get the paid version which is over a thousand dollars but you know having the order flow software is one thing next thing is yeah i know how to use it all right i provide you a lot of further education so you know how to understand order flow know what you're looking at so i give you access to the order flows trading course which normally i sell for 297 every day on my website it's 20 lessons it's about 15 hours of video instruction so it's not like oh this is what a point of control is and no you know it's an in-depth uh it's an in-depth course on trading order flow but I realize, you know, if, because you're watching this this video, you you probably understand order flow, and you really want to jump into it with both feet, you know, jump in and, and cannonball it. And I'll give you access to the order flows inner circle video series. Now, this is just the videos; you don't get the additional indicators. You get access to all 56 videos, which is my advanced order flow tricks, tips, and analysis. Normally, I sell these video series for 4.97, but I'm going to throw it in there also today when you get the software, because you know I, I really want to give you everything that you need to know about order flow so you can know that you know I, I that i know my shit basically that you understand i want you to know what i know and the only way to do it is that's why i created this inner circle video series because i actually wanted to to make videos series of uh you know my knowledge for my kids if when they get older if, if they want to trade at least they have something to go back to and start from there so when you start adding this up you know you can see it's the software the training the video series it's uh, already 1600 you know over 1600 dollars almost 1700 dollars but you know because of investor inspiration i'm going to also throw in something extra i'm going to throw in the, the trader kickstart um which is an additional course it's, it's 12 lessons it deals with the mental aspect of trading you know why traders fail why traders succeed um how to make a daily routine um, you know how to keep a journal and why it's important to keep a trading journal you know even if it's just on you know a simple notebook that you buy at walmart it's important to, to get into a routine and um you know to be successful you know great athletes have a routine before they start a game you know before they start a race they, they go through a certain process and you know as a trader you have to do that too it's not about sitting down at your desk five minutes before the market opens and you know with your cup of coffee and say okay i'm gonna start trading you know, can you be successful? Yeah, you can, but the chances are a lot less. I mean, I, I, there are some people like that. You know, I remember being in school, you know, as I used to study hard, but there'd be some kids that are just, for whatever reason, they could just, you know, have a report due. I'd be there, you know, all, all typed up and double spaced and everything. And they would just write it on their notebook like an hour before class, rip it out of their notebook, don't even tear the, the pieces, you know, the extra excess paper off the side, hand it in, they'd get an A, I'd get a B. You know, and I kick myself, why, why? You know, I mean, there, there are people out there like that, that no matter what they do is everything just turns up roses. But for most people, you know, trading is a journey. And that's why I created this Trader Kickstart. Um, so it help you get to where you want to be as a trader. So when you add all that up together, you know, it's, it's just about $2,000. It's 1990 okay? But you're not going to pay that. And you know, I hate to sound like one of these Ginsu knife sellers, you know, but wait, there's more. But you know, seriously, you know, I, I, I really want to see your success in the market. You know, trading is not for everybody. And, you know, sometimes, you know, when people can't make it as a trader, they like to blame other people. So that's why I, I like to give you as, as much information as possible 
so you can be successful you know and, and that's what it is I mean I said even without the software you put your hand over the software cross this one out the, the, all this training itself is it's about a thousand dollars worth of training and you're not gonna pay that you, it's a one-time payment of seven ninety nine. you just go to orderflows.com slash oft dot two dot html there's no more monthly payments or other payments to me in the future now you will need to pay your data fees at ninja trader if, if you're using a paid version in ninja trader of course but again you know, the software will run on the free version now you know what other people are saying is um, you know, hey Mike, your, your order flows trader software is remarkably helpful because I can clearly see now what's happening in the market. Like, for example, who's in control of the market on a very specific time and who's getting weaker as well. Now, go to, again, you know, trading is not for everybody and success varies. Some people will be more successful than others. It depends on you, how much time you're willing to put in and do you want to learn or not. So again, you'll know, go to orderflows.com slash OFT2.html. It takes you to this page. Okay, and you scroll down. There's a couple of videos on there if you want to learn more about the software, what it can do. You scroll down to the bottom. It gets takes you to this button here. I want in, and it takes you to PayPal, and it's just right here. You just uh, you can pay through PayPal, pay with debit or credit card if you don't have a PayPal account. I don't get your information. I don't want your information, and you know it's processed by PayPal. So you know the reason why you want to join order flows today is because you see the power of order flow analysis and how it can change your trading. You want to understand what's happening in the markets and you're excited to find low risk trading opportunities. You know, you want a life of freedom and fulfillment. I was able to retire from my job at 44 because of order flow trading when I was trading in the banks. Now, if you've stuck around to this point and I promised you earlier, you get a copy of my book trading order flow, go to the link below orderflows.com slash book.html. You'll have to enter your email address and confirm it and you'll be put on my distribution list. You know, it's funny, people sign up to get my book, and then, you know, when I send an email about something, they complain. But, uh, you know, there's there's a trade-off. You know, I, I, this book took me almost a year to write, actually. But, uh, you know, I'm giving it to you for free. And, you know, I, I just want to uh, share my information, share my knowledge with you. So act now. Go to orderflows.com slash off2.html and join. You know, I hope to see you on the inside and have a great day. Bye-bye.